Tonight on Nightline, the film festivals, the critics, the audiences, everyone thought it was one of the best films of the year. So why was it overlooked by the Oscars? The controversy over hoop dreams tonight. In Baghdad today, a senior Iraqi official said the two Americans who were arrested earlier this month when they crossed the border into Iraq are spies. But he added the humanitarian doors are not shut yet. Over the weekend, the Americans were sentenced to eight years in prison. The Clinton administration says it has a strategy to win their release, quiet diplomacy. Here's ABC's Britt Hume. When the president said goodbye to Prime Minister Bolger of New Zealand after a White House meeting this morning, there were some shouted questions from reporters about the jailed Americans in Iraq. Mr. President, what about the two Americans in Iraq, sir? Whether Mr. Clinton was deliberately ignoring the questions or simply didn't hear them, it is clear that the administration is walking a fine line, trying not to escalate the issue into a crisis while still trying to get the two men out. Uh, we're going to be working at that uh, endeavor uh, uh, with the uh, greatest effect that we can, uh, trying various diplomatic channels, trying various approaches to the matter. While Christopher said no option was being ruled out, senior officials privately scoffed at the idea raised over the weekend by Republican presidential candidates Pat Buchanan and Richard Lugar of using force to free the captives. The president's press secretary didn't exactly scoff, but the White House view of the talk of force was clear nonetheless. We would consider it irresponsible on our part to uh, raise questions of uh, use of military force uh, when that is, those are options that the president himself should or should not consider as he deems appropriate. Luger, clearly stung by the word irresponsible, shot back this afternoon. I, I think that perhaps uh, there is some irritation at the White House that a, a Republican senator is calling for open, decisive, prompt activity. Luger didn't say what he meant by open, decisive, prompt activity. A top official here called his talk of the use of force a cheap shot. It all seemed an early foretaste of what you get when you mix presidential politics with foreign policy. Rit Hume, ABC News, the White House. In Moscow today, Boris Yeltsin, heading off on vacation, acknowledged that when President Clinton visits next month, they'll have serious differences to resolve. The toughest of all, says Mr. Yeltsin, involves Russia's decision to sell two nuclear power reactors to Iran, a nation that has the potential to cause enormous trouble. ABC's Jillian Findlay on what's at stake. To America, it has the makings of a nuclear disaster, but to Russia, it means $800 million in hard currency. The deal to finish building this site and to supply Iran with a light water reactor is perfectly safe, the Russians say, and will only be used to produce nuclear energy. We found no substantial evidence that that country has a coordinated and integrated nuclear weapons program. But that flies in the face of earlier Russian intelligence reports. A 1993 report said Iran does have a program of applied military research in the atomic field. It also expressed concern about Iran's growing import of materials that could have dual applications. It's that possibility that reactors could be used by Iran as a cover for military research that has the Clinton administration so upset. Acquisition of these reactors in the uh, Iranian case would broaden Iran's nuclear infrastructure and would provide training and potential technology that over time could form the foundation uh, and be useful for a nuclear weapons program. U.S. lawmakers have threatened to cut off aid to Russia if the deal goes through. But in the post-Cold War world, nuclear technology is one of the few things Russia has to sell. As long as the deal is legal, the Minister for Nuclear Energy says, Russia should not be pressured to drop it. I don't think we deserve this. Support for perestroika in words, but no access to the world market. And according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, the deal is legal. For 25 years, Iran has been a member of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and has obeyed its laws. Whatever America may think about Iran's intentions, the fact is Iran has every right to buy the kind of technology the Russians are selling. Julian Finley, ABC News, Moscow. In South Africa today, President Nelson Mandela has run out of political patience with his estranged wife. He has fired Winnie Mandela from his cabinet. Mrs. Mandela is under investigation for allegedly taking bribes. She's also been one of Mr. Mandela's toughest critics, arguing that he's moving too slowly on social reform. 
There is news today about the Iditarod dog race, which has become a target of animal rights activists. When the race ended two weeks ago, Iditarod officials said that unlike previous years, this time no dogs died. That was wrong, and they knew it. Today, they admitted that one dog died during the race and another shortly after. The chief veterinarian said there had been a feeling it's not going to hurt us if the world doesn't know. And still ahead, the right to bear concealed arms. In the war against violent crime, several state and local governments are trying a new tactic. They're relaxing gun laws, allowing law-abiding citizens to carry concealed weapons. In Colorado, one county recently adopted the state's most lenient gun law, and the public response has been overwhelming. Here's ABC's Tom Foreman. Just like many communities, Colorado Springs has seen its share of violent crime and the public fear that goes with it. But now the county sheriff's department is offering a solution to local residents. Quick, easy to obtain permits for carrying concealed weapons. Do you need one too, sir? Deputies expected a few dozen applications. They have received more than 2,000. I do trust decent law-abiding citizens. And, and I think that they have a right to protect themselves. And I don't think that they should be at a disadvantage with an armed criminal. In the past, county residents had to prove they were immediately threatened by violent crime to receive a concealed weapons permit, and very few were granted. Now, anyone over 25 with no criminal record is eligible. 95% of the requests are being approved. Roger Oakey got his permit last week. He can carry a gun in his briefcase, under his jacket, in his pocket, almost anywhere. Over 1,700 violent crimes were committed in 1993 in Colorado Springs, and so that's 1,700 times that the police weren't there to save the potential victim. Martin Soberai says he will not carry a gun all the time, but now he can arm himself when he needs to. Well, you go out at night. If you have to go to 7-Eleven late at night, uh, you know, never know what you might run into. No one expected such a huge number of people to want to carry hidden guns. Deputies are working overtime to process all the applications. But they hope this effort will turn the tables on lawbreakers so that criminals will be the ones taking a chance when they take to the streets. Tom Foreman, ABC News, Colorado Springs. Well, the final preparations are underway for tonight's 67th presentation of the Academy Awards to be seen here on ABC. Forrest Gump, with 13 nominations, is the favorite to dominate the voting as it has at the box office. Gump is already the fourth highest grossing film of all time. Rap star Eazy-E has died of AIDS. The rapper, whose real name was Eric Wright, went public with his illness just 11 days ago, prompting thousands of calls from fans. He sold millions of records with NWA, a group that pioneered the hardcore gangster rap. Wright was 31 when he died last night. His wife and mother were with him. We'll be back. Finally, the First Lady Hillary Clinton is on her first extended trip overseas without the President. It's an ambitious itinerary with an ambitious message. In 12 days through five nations in South Asia, Mrs. Clinton, traveling with her teenage daughter Chelsea, is trying to bring attention to the plight of women and children and the education they so often do not receive. ABC's Ann Compton is in Pakistan. Barkat Ali, blind at age 75, sits all day in front of his dirt floor home in rural Pakistan. He shares it with his three sons, cousins, grandchildren. Today, Hillary Clinton came to call. Good afternoon, sir. I'm very pleased to be here to meet your family. She came to the village of Berkey because here, they give their daughters something most traditional families do not encourage, schooling. Mrs. Clinton is convinced that if more than one out of every five Pakistani women could read and write, if they were not pressured to stay home and only raise children, the cycle of poverty and overpopulation could be broken. It is the message she is carrying to five countries in South Asia, where more than half of the world's poor and illiterate live. I think it's important that people around the world and people in my country know that the mothers of Pakistan want their daughters educated. In sharp contrast to the village life, Pakistan's elite sends its young women to the exclusive girls' academy where Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto was educated. They are fluent in English, ambitious for careers in science and law, 
Yet these young women told the First Lady they still feel bound by tradition to accept arranged marriages. At an evening festival in a fort built by an 11th century sultan, Mrs. Clinton could see just how steeped in history these societies are. The cultural roots which give South Asia such color are the same roots which have kept women out of the political and economic mainstream. Mrs. Clinton realized that changing such traditions will take time. Ann Compton, ABC News, Lahore, Pakistan. And that's our report on World News Tonight. Later on Nightline, the controversy over the critically acclaimed movie The Oscars snubbed, Hoop Dreams. I'm Catherine Cryer. For all of us at ABC News, good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.